Good afternoon, Ospreys. You're watching Nest News. I'm Kylie. And I'm Kara. Coming up on today's show, a new United Faculty of Florida contract, UNF's early voting event, anti-Semitism and Jacks, an update about student government, and a sports update. Stay tuned and enjoy the show. The University of North Florida Faculty Union, the United Faculty of Florida, and the Board of Trustees have tentatively agreed on a contract that, if ratified and approved, will give faculty a 5% raise and a $1,000 bonus. Every three years, UFF and the BOT begin the process of full book contract negotiations. The contract dictates faculty terms and conditions of employment, covering the things like salary, benefits, promotion, and tenure. UNF faculty are paid the lowest of all Florida State University institutions, according to a 2020 and 2021 faculty salary analysis by the National Education Association. UNF professor and faculty union president Elizabeth Brown said that the 5% is still something to be celebrated. Faculty can either get a promotion or achieve tenure. Achieving tenure means a 12.5 salary increase, but there are no other opportunities for an increase, she explained. Now, contract negotiations allow for faculty to negotiate with the BOT to consider factors such as cost of living increases and inflation. This negotiated contract will last from 2022 to 2025 if approved. The union hopes to get it ratified in early November. In order for it to be implemented, it must be approved by the BOT. Students were invited to an early voting event last week hosted by a UNF professor. English professor Michaela Boudry partnered with the Intercultural Center, Faculty Union, and the Center for Community-Based Learning to throw students a pizza party and shuttle them to a nearby polling station. I think that it's really important for students to be able to have first the opportunity to be able to go out and vote, Boudry told Spinnaker. Everyone was welcome, even those who weren't registered to vote in Duval County. Volunteers provided information about how to request a ballot and other important information to those who needed it. Boudry said her vision for the event was more than about the students voting that day. It was also about the students who created voting plans or learned how to register to vote. She hopes to have this event every election season funding dependent. Anti-Semitic messages were displayed around the city of Jacksonville last weekend after the Georgia-Florida football game. Some of these messages were seen showing support for rapper Ye, formerly known as Kanye West, as the anti-Semitic comments he previously made on social media and in various interviews. UNF's Jewish Student Union made a statement on Instagram condemning these messages, saying that anti-Semitism cannot be tolerated in Jacksonville or anywhere that the Jewish community at UNF and in Jacksonville is here to support each other. JSU Treasurer Lee Jordan said the anti-Semites can try to make us afraid, but they can't take away our identity and our culture. UNF President Lamayam told Spinnaker early this week that UNF is dismayed by these acts of intolerance and wants to reaffirm UNF's support for the Jewish members of the community and all of those who were affected by these actions. Last week, Spinnaker incorrectly reported that student government had 18 candidates running for Senate in their fall 2022 election and that they would have 18 candidates total in the spring. Student government has 19 senators running in the current election and will begin the spring semester with 26 senators. Spinnaker takes errors seriously and apologizes for the error. And now to Riley for your sports update. What's up, Ospreys? I'm Riley. This week, we'll be taking you inside UNF Basketball's Media Day festivities. The annual event took place on Tuesday with both the men's and women's squads previewing their upcoming seasons. Men's basketball head coach Matthew Driscoll was his usual self, looking forward to the 2022-23 season with excitement. New additions to the ASUN Conference do present challenges, though, something Driscoll acknowledged Tuesday. I think there's seven or eight teams. I think there's seven or eight teams that could win the tournament. Not the regular season, but the tournament, just because of what you said. There's just 14 teams is a lot. While the past couple of seasons have been less than ideal for the Ospreys, they look to make major improvements this season with team leaders Carter Hendrickson and Jose Placer back at 100%. A luxury the squad did not have last year. We have these dudes back, and they're experienced, they're healthy, and they're hungry. And when you're hungry, you'll be humble. And when those two things meet, you're going to be able to do whatever you want to do. Elsewhere in Osprey country, volleyball will be taking to UNF Arena's new court for the first time Sunday in a River City Rumble match against the Jacksonville Dolphins. This will be the venue's first event since construction began in March. The showdown starts at 5 p.m., so make sure to fill the nest and make some noise. That's all we have for you this week. Stay tuned for all things Ospreys. Swoop! And now to the School of Communications for your weekly weather update.
Hey there, Ospreys. Welcome to a weather edition of Inside Super 90. I'm Grace Durobi, here to give you the top weather news and the local forecast. Starting off with today's top world weather story. The Environment Protection Agency has awarded grants for projects to monitor air quality for 37 states, with a focus on minority communities and other areas overburdened by pollution. A total of 132 projects will receive $53.4 million to enhance air quality monitoring near chemical plants, refineries, and other industrial sites. Heading into today's weather, we can expect patchy fog this morning, but it should burn off as the sun rises. After that, we can expect mostly sunny to partly cloudy skies with some, 11, with some 6 to 11 mile per hour wind coming in from the northeast. Today's high will be 79 degrees and the low will be 66 degrees. Now let's take a look at our radar. Breezy conditions continue today with a blend of sun and clouds will develop a, a few coastal showers will be possible. Now let's take a look at our forecast for the week. Changes begin to arrive for the weekend. Mostly cloudy skies and, and scattered showers are expected. If you plan to be at the Jags game on, su on Sunday, you might want to pack your rain gear as scattered showers are possible. A large storm system will develop near the Bahamas that will impact our weather for most of next week. We will see some strong winds and clouds and some rain starting on Monday. The highs for the week will range from the mid-70s to low 80s, while the lows will range from the high 50s to mid-60s. Well, that does it for this weather edition of Inside Super 90. Have a great day, Ospreys. I'm Grace Derevi, and I'll see you next time. That's about all we have for you today, Ospreys. Remember, consider donating to support College Radio at UNF through the link in the description below. For all things Spinnaker, check out our website at unfspinnaker.com. Also, make sure to follow us on our Instagram at UNF Spinnaker and check out the rest of our YouTube for more content. As always, thank you so much for watching. I'm Kara. And I'm Kylie. We'll see you next week on Spinnaker's Nest News.